Okay, right up front, I'm going to admit that there are probably a ton of people that know more about the I Love Lucy show than I do. That said, I must say that I always enjoyed the show as a kid growing up, and to this day, I value those moments when I can crack open a cold Diet Coke and settle on in and watch the antics of Lucy, Ricky, Fred, and Ethel. So this particular video is going to focus on actors William Frawley and Vivian Vance. And truthfully, maybe a little bit more on Vivian Vance. But these two were very talented actors that I have a ton of respect for. The on-screen pairing of these two, well, it was without doubt comedy gold. Vance wasn't Lucille Ball's first choice for the character Ethel, but it goes without saying that after Vance got the role, it didn't take long for everybody to understand what a tremendous comedic actor that they had found for the show. And Bill Frawley? Well, he was Bill Frawley. What you saw on the screen is pretty much the man that he was. And while Lucy, Desi, and Bill were all very tickled with the way that the show was developing over the course of those first few years, there were certain things that just kind of got Vance's goat. So to better understand what I'm talking about, let's start here with this picture. Yep, that's Vivian Vance. Sure, she's a few years younger, and no doubt this picture was taken when Vivian was likely in her 20s, long before she was cast as Ethel on the I Live Lucy show at the age of 39, but still, you get my point. Vivian Vance, as the tubes like to sing in their classic 80s song, well, she's a beauty. And because Lucy was the star of the show, that required Vance to tone down her looks quite a bit. Bottom line, when it came to looks, Lucy wanted to be second banana to no one. By all accounts, that really bugged Vivian. But as Lucy and Vivian's friendship grew stronger and stronger over the years, something else was building up ahead of steam as well. You see, that other thing that really just, like I said, got her goat was the disparity in age between her and Bill. More than once I've read a quote from her that more or less said, that guy should have been cast as my dad, not my husband. Because of the age difference and because of their very distinct personalities, the comedic chemistry that is seen on screen between these two, well, it's the only chemistry that there ever was. In fact, when the two weren't filming together, they made every effort to be nowhere near each other. But like I said, despite their differences, both Bill and Vivian were professionals dedicated to their craft, so they made it work. Watching I Love Lucy as a kid, I had no idea about the off-screen turmoil that was going on. I had no idea that Vance has said that upon receiving a script for the show, she would quickly read the whole thing just to see how much she would have to interact with her co-star. Frawley, on the other hand, didn't seem to care much about the fact that neither of them really had any true affection for the other. And the turmoil continued as I Love Lucy morphed from a half-hour show into the Lucy and Desi hour. You've really got to hand it to these two. Behind the smiles, behind the laughter, there was a real chill. So when the Lucy and Desi hour ended and Lucille Ball began work in earnest on her next project, one of her first requests was for her friend Vivian to join her as a cast member. Truthfully, I only vaguely remember this show. I watched a handful of episodes as a kid when it was first on television, and I haven't returned to it since. Still, you've got Lucille Ball, Vivian Vance, and Gail Gordon. Really, folks, how can you go wrong? So anyway, most important to Vivian was that she not have to work with Bill again. To call what they had a feud is probably not the right way to categorize their relationship because there really was no one thing that either of them could point to. It's just that their relationship, or better put, their lack of one, was because they were such different, different people. After the Lucy show, this is how I remember Vivian best. Pitching Maxwell House Instant Coffee as Maxine the Coffee Lady. Unrelated, but still worth mentioning, I think, is that guy in this print advertisement. Man, he sure looks a lot like a young Michael Keaton. Probably not him, but he sure looks like him. In the mid-70s, Vivian made an appearance on the Mary Tyler Moore spin-off Rhoda. Her appearance was meant to be the beginning of a new, recurring character that would show up from time to time. Unfortunately, because of her health issues, Vance's appearance on the show was one and done. Just looking at this picture reminds me that if you're into Twitter and you're into TV the way I am, particularly stuff from the 60s and 70s, I'd recommend following this guy on Twitter, Silver Age Television. 
It's at Silver Age TV if you're trying to find it. Vance's last appearance with longtime friend Lucy was a couple years later on the TV special Lucy Calls the President. And then in 1979, Vivian would be gone. Once again, cancer was the culprit. It really would be great if someday we could beat that disease in its many variations. William Frawley wasn't around to be glad or sad. He'd passed away more than a decade earlier. And although Vivian had joked about breaking open champagne upon hearing about Bill's passing, she also had said enough nice things about the man as an actor, and he of her, that I have no doubt that, while they may not have liked each other much, they had a decent amount of respect for each other as professionals in the business of entertainment. So that's it. Let's close here with a picture of Vivian Starr on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. She really was great, and so was William Frawley. But together, well, they were legendary. I guess that's what makes stories about their so-called feud so much fun to tell and retell. But the reality is, they were just very, very different people. All right, now it's your turn. Please share your memories in the comments section. And while you're at it, I would appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And what the heck? Why not subscribe to my little YouTube channel? I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.